Oh, wow. Good morning, everybody. How are you? Judy and I are delighted to be here. I must say I, I feel a little emotional uh, this morning. Uh, I feel like uh, there is so much strength coming from you guys, so much energy, so much direction, so much intelligence. I know that this city will never go back to what it was before. Change has happened. Change is inculcated in your very mentalities and attitudes. And we're going to try to keep every damn one of you here <laughs> working to make the city of Lincoln competitive in this world. It's a wonderful thing. Uh, Leadership Lincoln, doing a tremendous job at a time when in this country uh, it's hard to find positive things going on. The, the production year after year of additional leadership into the city's ranks is making all of the difference. And what I would like to do today is to talk about the factors that I think make a difference in building a great city uh, so that you can reflect upon them and in your judgment inculcate them into your mentality to keep this city moving forward. This is about 2,000 words, folks, and I'm, and I'm going to try to move through it very quickly. The only consolation here is that it was 3,000 words two days ago. <laughs> So, uh, so we're going to take a look at those factors, uh, not just in Lincoln, but in cities across the nation, how they make things work better. Some cities, as you know, are filled with energy and excitement. Anything that you can imagine seems possible. Something always seems to be happening. And what are the factors that create that magic? What causes a city to have that compelling appeal about it. We think everything starts with a vision, an idea of what Lincoln should be, a multifaceted vision that captures the collective imagination and inspires action, while still providing at the same time for the less glamorous fundamentals of everyday life. That multifaceted vision is perhaps our greatest strength as a community. We respect and support visionaries and the dreams for the future because we have learned that taking well-calculated risks brings the greatest progress. Rewarding the visionaries becomes a virtuous cycle. Success achieved in the past shows the next dreamers that their ideas will not be dismissed out of hand but rather embraced and explored. As time progresses, those great visions of the future become the solid plans of the present and serve as a more precise guide in our quest to be a great city. While a successful community starts with vision, it cannot translate that vision into action without community buy-in. But a community engages its citizens when it engages its citizens, it's a commentary on how a city does business. Do people feel connected to what is happening? Do they feel like they have an impact on the direction of the city? People want to be true stakeholders in their community. Without avenues for civic participation, cities cannot consistently make the progress that leads to success. Leadership Lincoln's servant leadership concept is an example of a consensus building model that has fueled Lincoln's amazing growth over the past 12 years. Think also of the Vision 15 group, Prosper Lincoln, advisory councils for community learning centers, neighborhood associations, the Chamber of Commerce, and the city's taking charge process initiative. They all create avenues of participation that bind our community together. However, a broad set of visions, community buy-in, cannot take hold in a city that feels insecure, not safe. 
That's why public safety is a fundamental element of a great city. If people don't feel safe, they don't make investments and create growth. They don't form the relationships that create strong neighborhoods. Fear rather than hope defines their interactions. Their outlook is short term. Lincoln, in fact, now is one of the safest communities in the nation. Our crime rate is the envy of cities our size. Violent crime has dropped 29% over the last decade. Our police department is a national leader in the use of technology to fight crime, and our police officers are truly dedicated public servants who work with the community to keep us safe in a whole number of ways. Over the last two budgets, we've added 23 police officers to better protect our growing city. Lincoln Fire and Rescue also has an enviable record. We enjoy one of the best fire safety ratings in the country, which translates for you and I into significantly lower fire insurance premiums for both homeowners and business owners. And it sounds a little strange, but if you're going to have a heart attack, hope that it happens in Lincoln, Nebraska. While no one wants that experience, of course, Lincoln Fire and Rescue does have a cardiac save rate that is consistently double the national average. Here again, we are making investments. Four new fire stations will open soon, thanks to voter approval of the sales tax for public safety. The City Council and I added 15 new firefighters and at least nine new fire apparatus in the new budget. It is easy to say that public safety is the city's highest priority, but we have to continue to back that up with key investments in our police and fire service to keep our community safe and to keep it growing. We have also worked over the last year to increase school safety and educational opportunities for our kids. By partnering with LPS and community nonprofits, we created the Safe and Successful Kids Initiative. Six new school resource officers and a threat assessment officer were added. We expanded mental health services for students and we strengthened our community learning centers, which provide rich and enriching and safe places for our kids uh, to learn during non-school hours, primarily on school sites. Our community learning centers are creating the dreamers and the doers and the innovators of tomorrow. We have learned that taking a new look at a problem, emb embracing change and encouraging innovation creates an environment that allows our community to better grow and improve through partnerships. That's why innovation also, in and of itself, is the fourth hallmark of successful cities that I would like to address today. Embracing innovation is creating an environment conducive to entrepreneurism and economic growth. Public and private stakeholders work tirelessly to plan and to organize and to marshal the resources necessary to support our thriving startup community. These efforts have put Lincoln on the national spotlight and have cemented our reputation as a hub of the Silicon Prairie. Today we can proudly say that innovation in Lincoln is thriving and City Hall is a part of that. The on-demand autonomous shuttle project has generated national attention. Our plan for downtown driverless shuttles that can be summoned by smartphones made Lincoln one of 35 finalist cities in the Mayor's Challenge, a national competition to encourage innovation. The five winning cities will be announced next month, and if Lincoln is successful, you could see shuttles on downtown streets as soon as next summer. The Lincoln Technology Improvement System is a 400-mile recently built network of fiber and conduit all across this community. The city's $700,000 investment to create the system is paying huge dividends. Customers and businesses are seeing new broad broadband providers in town, increased competition, lowered prices, and even faster and safer vehicle traffic flow. 
Taxpayers are also seeing benefits. The system has led Allo to expanding high-speed fiber to thousands of homes across the city. That private sector investment has increased the company's value by $82 million, bringing over a quarter million dollars in new revenue to the city itself each year. A culture of innovation only goes so far without the backbone to support it. And that is the next key element to successful cities. Traditional infrastructure. It's our streets and all the utility systems under them and near them that we rely on every day for water service and sewer service and stormwater control. Infrastructure fuels the growth that creates new jobs and new opportunities while expanding the tax base. As a Brookings Institute study put it, rotten roads, bum economy. That's why the new budget invests $67 million per year in street maintenance and construction and why our spending on streets has increased dramatically since the national recession ended in 2010. Construction will begin on the South Beltway in 2020. Several key arterial streets are recently improved to uh, better, drive, better serve drivers in all areas of the city. It is not a coincidence that Lincoln's booming economy has coincided with additional investment in streets. We are also aggressively expanding water and wastewater and stormwater infrastructure to promote and support growth. Seven miles of water mains are being replaced each year. Investment in our sanitary sewer system is currently opening vast new areas in East and Southwest Lincoln for development. A successful city today offers more than the solid basics, must offer more than the solid basics. And that brings us to our sixth factor, providing a high quality of life and the cultural experiences that keep a community compellingly vibrant and interesting and competitive for people. Providing recreational and tourist opportunities are important to our residents and good for our economy. An example is the Prairie Corridor on Haynes Branch, an ambitious partnership, public-private, to preserve the natural heritage and establish a regional tall grass prairie attraction. Ultimately, trails will connect Pioneers Park to both Conestoga Lake and Spring Creek Audubon Center, 11 miles away, offering recreational opportunities that will draw residents and visitors alike from across the nation to experience the beauty and the history of the prairie. Today is the opening day of the 15th annual Lincoln Calling, a music festival, as most of you know, that, that uh, focuses on emerging artists while promoting the local art scene. Last year, downtown Lincoln venues drew 8,000 music lovers from 75 cities, 25 states, and three other countries. It's a good example of the type of public-private partnership that is building in this community and building something significant. The seventh element of successful cities is closely tied to that quality of life objective and sense of place. And it's strong and vibrant neighborhoods. This is where the first, first six elements can come together with great impact. People want to live where they feel safe, where they feel welcome, where they feel connected. That's why we continue to invest in safety and in parks and in streets and in sidewalks to build strong neighborhoods. We are also investing in people themselves, providing the programs and the technologies that help residents improve their own lives and the communities immediately surrounding themselves. A great technology example in this area is the new Uplink program that empowers residents to report to the city neighborhood problems request service on the problems, track solutions with an app on their smartphones. Uplink literally puts the power to make things better in the palm of your hand. We also continue to invest in helping people grow their futures. 
Our first time home buyer program makes housing more affordable and encourages families to strive for their dreams. Increased funding for important human service programs provide food security for those in need, shelter for families that are in need, and job training for families to build better lives. Here again, it is the city's partnership with dozens of local nonprofits that connect families to the resources they need to continue upward mobility. Even the most successful cities know that they can do better. Despite our achievements, we know that there are many areas in which we can do better. We know that we must find ways to fund city infrastructure to keep pace with our growth. We know that our city faces a workforce short shortage. We know that far too many Lincoln families live at or near poverty. But successful cities do not shy away from these challenges. They use the momentum of their past achievements and attack those challenges. We have already come together as a community to address these and other critical issues. We know that working together with public-private coalitions as we have in the past is the key to finding the right solutions in the future. And that brings me to the final and the most important ingredient of a successful city building formula, the people themselves who make up the community. I want to start with some of the best and bravest as we sit comfortably this morning enjoying breakfast. First responders from our great city are putting themselves in harm's way in North Carolina to help victims of the devastating floods of Hurricane uh, Florence. We join their families and friends in praying for their safe return. Take a look at the people being honored today. What a group, Liz Coop, the, the whole Leadership Lincoln class who developed the MyLink uh, app. Take a look at the past Luminary Award winners and the nominees who share their time and talents every day with no expectation of being honored. And take a look at the people at your table and around this room today, an outstanding group of doers problem solvers and civic leaders. Every day, the people of Lincoln live up to our reputation as a hardworking, friendly, and generous population. We are a pitch-in people. Whether we're at work or in the classroom or cheering on our favorite team, <clears throat> we reflect our community values, honesty, and respect, and integrity and fairness and personal responsibility. We understand the value of cooperation, partnership, and helping our neighbors. We strive to bring all people to the table. That's the Lincoln way. What we have achieved here in Lincoln is a very special balance of tradition and innovation. Despite our differences in age, in background, or circumstances, Lincoln feels like home to all of us. What makes our city successful, and most of all, is each and every one of you in this room who pitch in. Thank you for loving Lincoln and for working every day to move our city forward. Thank you.